Well, hello, welcome back. Well, as promised, I told you I'd do a video if I ever got my visa for Ecuador, and I got it. It comes as basically an electronic form, an email, which is uh, convenient. I uh, just fold it up and I keep it right inside my passport here. And uh, that's what I've got. I also have a physical or electronic copy of it that I've got pre-downloaded to my phone. And of course, multiple physical backups of it and filing cabinets, but I, I keep it electronic, all my identification cards scanned in on a downloaded folder in my phone, both phones that I carry. So it's here. Let me um, recap real quick how I did it. I'm going to bring up my, uh, my notes. Okay, so what did I get? Um, I got a professional visa. I talked about that. I, went, I have other videos out on the different steps that I went through for this visa. But I got a professional. Why professional? Well, because it's, it's relatively easy once you get a degree registered down here. If you've got a four-year or better degree, you can register it in Ecuador. Then you can get a visa. That visa has not tied any property. Um, it's, you can renew it. There's no um, very little proof of anything else that you need other than uh, the degree. Uh, why didn't I do one of the new fancy digital nomad visas since, you know, I do brand myself as that. The simple reason is, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's a horrible visa. You need a two-year work contract or a two-year contract for uh, rental property or something like that. These are not contracts that are common to get. And I'm certainly not going to try to get my company to give me a two-year work contract. Um, first of all, I'll never get it. And B, I just don't need to involve my company in my travels. So uh, I didn't get that. You can get an investor visa, which is another, but then you're tying up money down here, which is no problem with that if, um, if that works for you. So I did the professional visa because it's relatively easy. And you know, if you've got a four year degree, it makes it nice. Um, as I mentioned, it's electronic visa. So let's, let's recap all the things I had to do to get this. Uh, first off, and the very first thing is pick someone to help you. Don't try to do this alone. Uh, you're dealing with a foreign country, and unless you're fluent in Spanish and understand Ecuadorian culture, um, which is great if you do, but if you don't, which is probably most of the people watching this channel, you um, get somebody to help. I used um, Ecuador visas. Uh, it's a gal by the name of uh, Sarah Chaka. She is a lawyer. She lives in um, Cuenca, and she has an office here, some help here in Monta, where I am, uh, she did what was needed. She got everything done. I had to do very little. After I got her the documents, that was it. She did, took care of everything else. She would have taken care of apostolizing the documents and things like that, but uh, it's difficult for them to do it down here in Ecuador. They charge a, a hefty fee because of the process. It's just easier for us to do it when we're up in the US, do that before we come down here. But I gave her the docs. Gave her power of attorney, gave her my passport, which was a little scary, but no problem. She got it right back to me after she was done with it and uh, took care of everything. So uh, you got to have your degree registered. Do that way first. You've got to get your background checks. Do that just before you leave the country. They're only good for six months. And it takes about a month to month and a half to get them apostled, apostled. Remember that process? There's another video that talks all about that here, about getting your background checks. So the timing is important. So you got to plan this out and you got to get them the um, documents to your lawyer, get them done. There are other people that do it down here uh, that help you out with the process. Um, Ecuador visas I found online. Uh, Sarah had written a couple articles. They didn't require cash up front the entire amount. I could pay PayPal to them for the first part. One thing that you've got to know that uh, culturally, I think it's a cultural issue. I don't know. I probably shouldn't make claims of culture issues because I'm pretty ignorant on, on most cultures, including my own. The, um, they don't really offer a lot of for, upfront information. You ask questions, they'll give you an answer. They don't pre-offer information to you. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's um, courteous that they don't want to insult you or something you know. I don't know. Uh, but you want to check. For instance, I did not check that I could pay the back, the final payment with PayPal. I just assumed it. Well, I couldn't. I had to pay it here. It's no big deal. I was um, able to do it. And, you know, uh, Sarah worked with me on that one. Uh, so not a problem, but it was an assumption I made that I should not have. And I did not ask the question. 
Um, so ask a lot of questions. The facilitators are here to help you, but you need to drive the process. Make sure that you're asking questions, make sure you know the process, uh, quiz them. Um, they might not like being quizzed, who cares? Uh, you're paying them. So understand the process, know what's coming next, and don't be surprised by anything because they won't necessarily offer things up for you. Uh, Sarah was actually relatively good at that. She kept me up to date on things. I had to ping her frequently for to get status, but that's just a, you know, she's a busy person and I want status more often than any human would probably understand. So, uh, but you do have to quiz them a lot. And uh, like I said, Sarah was fairly good about laying out the entire process, but you need to dig in and ask a lot of questions. There are other visa processing folks down here. Um, obviously, I would say go ahead and use Ecuador Visa, especially if you're in Cuenca, uh, because they work for me. Now, one thing you have to know in Ecuador is it's actually, it's a little weird for if you're coming from the U.S. There's criminal penalties associated with giving bad reviews or trash talking somebody, even on an online forum, if they can demonstrate that it's substantially hurt their business. Even if the if what you said was true, if they can prove it hurt your business, uh, you, you could have criminal exposure on that. So, and the reason I mentioned that is the absence of negative reviews in this country is not a positive. If you can't find anything bad about somebody, people won't say bad something bad about something. You need to look for positive reviews. And Sarah certainly has positive reviews. She has one more from me, obviously. I was, she got the job done. I never had to step foot in a government um, agency to get any of this work done. And I have my visa in a reasonably timely manner. Uh, I've got to do the sigilo with her next and she's already working on that. Um, there are others, uh, Gringo Visa. Let's see, there's a, there's a couple infamous, famous folk down here in Ecuador uh, named a million G and JP, I'm sure they're a lovely couple. I don't know them, but uh, they have a huge series of YouTube videos out. I think they recommend Gringo Visas. Um, there's a, another YouTuber down here named John Shader. Um, he, I think he also recommends Gringo Visa. Uh, they both used them, so that's another one. Ecuador Visa is what I used. Both seem to be um, getting the job done down here. And there are others, I just don't know anything about them. Um, so I already mentioned the warning about uh, background checks in the six month window. If you're doing a visa and you want to include a dependent such as your spouse or your children, the, the funny thing is you have to have a certified copy of your marriage certificate for the dependent, which is normal, but that certified copy has to be less than six months old. So it has to be printed and certified less than six months and of course apostilled. So I don't know if they're worried that you magically got a divorce and still want to include them as a dependent. I thought that was a little weird, but I thought it was worth mentioning. That wasn't real obvious to us that the marriage certificate had to be within the last six months. Not the date of the marriage, just the certified copy of the marriage certificate. So, but I've got it. Next up is the cedula and relatively painless process. They're good for two years. After two years if, uh, with some requirements about being in country for so long, you can apply for a professional. Now I have two visas, two different countries. I have Ecuador and Mexico. Why two? I like options. I do not wish to go back to the US or be forced back to the US uh, during the year because of the tax benefits of staying outside the US. Don't, I'm not gonna get into whether or not you like or dislike the US. There's absolute guarantee that if you're a W-2 worker, you get a huge tax break if you're outside of the country for 30, 331 days. And if something goes wrong here in Ecuador, you know, heaven forbid, but you know, revolution, strike, earthquake, natural disasters, who knows what could go wrong? I might choose to leave this country in a rapid fashion. I don't want to be forced to go back to the U.S. because I don't have any more options. Now, yeah, sure, you can go to Mexico as a U.S. citizen for 180 days um, on, a, on a tourist visa, most likely, but why risk a tourist visa when a residency uh, visa is so easy to get? So I got a spare. Um, I'd probably pick up a third one, but right now, um, as a digital nomad, not ducking out of my tax responsibility, but legally taking advantage of all of available tax breaks uh, from the US, I wanna stay outside the country, so I want 
specific places where I can go, safe spots, visa-wise, that I can uh, stay there legally and avoid having to go back to the U.S. That's why I have two different visas. Um, like I said, you probably get away with a tourist visa in Mexico, but, but why bother? Well, I do have it. Um, I hope you found this video series useful. I don't have a ton of followers, but I hope you like this. Uh, I'm going to post some more about cards and what I'm doing with my visas, and um, I'll probably post some information as I go back because I have to renew my Mexican visa. The first one's only for a year, so I've got to renew it. I think it's a three-year renewal for my temporary residency in Mexico. I'll post some more information on that when I'm in Mexico in a couple months. Uh, take care, and I hope you find these videos useful.